Our next lesson is called Interpreting the Line of Best Fit. So what does the line of best fit tell us about our situation? That's what we're going to discuss today. So in number one, let's look back at our star real estate example from the previous lesson. So if you recall, that was a situation where you are a realtor, you sell homes in this area, and you're trying to help your clients come up with the price of their home so that they can sell it. So it says, the line of best fit is modeled by the equation, I'm going to underline it here, y equals 177.91x minus 113,474. The scatter plot with the line of best fit is shown below. So here is a copy of the scatter plot from our previous lesson with the line of best fit drawn in. So today's focus is about looking at that equation and interpreting what these values mean. And this should be somewhat familiar to you because this is the same thing that we did during our functions discussions. Taking a look at the slope or rate of change and describing what it means in terms of the situation and doing the same thing with the y-intercept or the initial value. So it's basically the same idea here. Just keeping in mind that the line of best fit is giving you the general idea. It's not exact values. So A, what is the slope of the linear model? So let's first identify the slope. If I look at the equation, we're following that general form y equals mx plus b. If that's the case, then my slope should be 177.91. Now, what does that mean, though, in terms of the situation? So remember from our scatter plot, we were saying as the size or square footage increases, the price of the home also increases. So this number is breaking it down and really giving us a specific number to describe. So we are going to say the price of a home increases by that price, so that would be $177.91 per, so that's our y-axis, we look at our x, it's square feet, so we'll say per square foot. So there's a, dis we're describing it, right? We're locating the number in the equation that is correctly the slope or rate of change. And now we're describing what that number means in terms of our situation. We can also do the same thing with the y-intercept or what we used to call in during the functions chapter initial value. So what is the y-intercept of the model? Again, following y equals mx plus b, you would see that the y-intercept is the negative 113,000 474 number. Now, what does this mean? Now, remember, this is data. So we're trying to describe it in terms of the data that we have here. So we're going to say the cost of a home, that is, now let's think of what y-intercept means. If you're a y-intercept, you're on the y-axis, which means your x value is always a zero. So that means our square footage is zero. So the cost of a home that is zero square feet costs negative $113,474. Negative $113, so see, does the y-intercept make sense in this situation? So we have to look at this idea here. We've got price of homes and square footage. Does it make sense that if a house to have zero square footage and then to cost negative dollars? Probably definitely not, right? So we're going to say here no because you cannot pay a negative price for a home. 
So this whole idea of whether or not these make sense is an extra part of statistics that you'll talk more about in the future. But in general, you really should only be looking at the scatter plot in front of you and the information that you can see on that scatter plot and line of best fit in order to make predictions and describe the different uh, patterns that you see in the scatter plot. Because you cannot assume that going off of this is going to give you numbers that actually make sense in context of the problem. So let's switch and go to number two. It says the scatter plot below shows the reaction time in milliseconds of people of various ages. The line of best fit is modeled by the equation y equals negative 9.25x plus 400. So this is the equation we're going to be using to help us answer the questions that follow. So similar to what we already did, let's take a look at a different situation. With this one, remember, it's reaction time in milliseconds of people of various ages. So if I look at my scatter plot, and I think back to our previous lessons, I see a linear model, which is why it makes sense to have a y equals mx plus b equation. So we'll write that down again. Just remember that's the format we're following. And I see a negative trend or a negative direction here, association. Because as my x value is going up, which is my age, my reaction time my y value is coming down. So that's why you'll see a negative slope in question A. What is the slope of the linear model? The number in front of x is the slope, so that slope is negative 9.25. It says, what does that mean in this situation? So we're going to describe what that means. Remember, that's kind of over 1. So we're going to say the reaction time, because remember it's change in y over change in x. We want to discuss the reaction time first because that's the y value. The reaction time, and since it is negative, we're going to say decreases 9.25 milliseconds. So we'll do MSEC for milliseconds. And if I look at the x-axis, it's in years, so I'll say per year. Then we have in B, what is the y-intercept of the linear model? So that should be 400. What does this mean in this situation? So similar to before, we got to think about what a y-intercept means. You're on the y-axis, which means your x value is 0. So you're talking about a little baby. When a baby... is born right, because you're zero years, you're just a baby, their reaction time is 400 milliseconds. Now, again, we're going to think about this. Does the y-intercept make sense in this situation? So our situation is reaction time in milliseconds. So we're saying that a baby has the fastest reaction time of all the people. And think about this. What do babies do? They're pretty laid back. They sleep, they eat, they sleep some more, right? So I don't think this makes sense. So we're going to say no. Babies do not have fast reaction times. So now you can see not only can we write the line of best fit, make predictions with it like we did previously, but we should also be able to identify the slope and y-intercept of these lines of best fit and interpret what they mean in terms of the situation, as well as reflect on whether some of these numbers actually make sense. And that concludes your lesson on interpreting the line of best fit.